hey, what the hell's up with that text message from my brother? Can you talk to him about that? <laughs> Does that go in the outtakes? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I don't think I can talk to him about that. I think, yeah. Bro, he, he said it like it was, I think, I don't know. I, it's like he said it like mom knows and like he's away from it. So I don't know. You know, look, it's been 15 years. I grew up with this this kid, you know, this man. We were close and we fell out for 10, 15 years. And I don't know what rough things he's been through in 10, 15 years, but it led him some dark places, apparently. And I'm guessing he's talked to my mom about it. And, you know, he's away from all that. And I'm guessing he expected my mom to have told me. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a, that's a lot but, to ask of dear mom there. Golly. <laughs> Hey, Aaron, have you heard about your yeah, brother? Have you heard? Yeah. What do I, I mean, it's like, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because he's like, not anymore. He's like, I'm away from that. Okay. Okay. But not enough, okay. not away enough to do the podcast tonight though. That was still, yeah, the, the dark still, cloud yeah, is still, still, still hovering over. Yeah. Right. If it makes you feel any better. <laughs> I have a half brother who I, I don't talk to him anymore but he he had a quite a few rough patches that that's why i was like you know bro we were cool you be cool over there i'll be cool over here um, he, well he's he's not half too we grew up ah. not knowing not knowing until we were until i was 10 but still it was all it, that really wasn't from my perspective anyways maybe it was from him i don't know but um it was just like like if you caught me a year ago if you caught me a year ago and somebody told me the story that I just told you, I would say, yeah, I get it. I've got a brother that I haven't talked to <laughs> in, in 15 <laughs> years. So you better watch out, man. That might be coming around. You might yeah, be I was about to it. say, you haven't encouraged me to reforge the bond, to, to, to reach out and rekindle the connection there. I think I'm going to just leave that be, you know, like. Uh... I believe the proper word is yikes. <laughs> yikes. That's right. Looney Tunes all the way, holding up a sign. Yikes. <laughs> well, sorry, Aaron. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, on the flip side, I thank him because he was looking out for me. He's like, hey, man. I mean, yeah, to his credit, he really did you a solid. He, he I, I, that took some uh, some personal integrity. I got to say that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Of all the fans that I have, who's going to look that far deep into it? <laughs> or on the flip side, I don't know how many fans he had. Yeah, you may you may have found a whole new crowd for a thirty eight to thirty eight. <laughs> you were you weren't quite ready for. <laughs> oh. I don't think I should ever be ready for that. <laughs> episode is presented by OIT VoIP. Enhance your client's communication abilities with our VoIP solution, featuring integrated billing, on-demand training, and live U.S. support. Collaborate seamlessly with Microsoft Teams integration and put your entire phone system in your pocket with MobileX. Improve your offerings and increase profitability with reliable service for one-tenth of the average MSP acquisition cost. To learn more, visit OIT.co or dial 844-CALL-OIT. Uh, it was good to be able to at least I hope you don't judge me or even my brother for that matter. I mean, I don't know what all darkness, obviously, he went through. But, man, I'll let you know, it was it felt relieving to at least express it like th is this is a matrix. It feels like this is a matrix. And then so, this is we're in a matrix and somebody is like is like just put in like a uh, like a, a downloadable character, <laughs> like some kind of DLC someone just purchased, like like this side mission. <laughs> This side mission. Deal with your. <laughs> well, Deal all with the, this. All the listeners and viewers out there, uh, we, we don't want to put anybody on blast, but surely you can relate to some some uh, uh, black sheep in your family. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's just an episode, that, a lost episode that 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 we didn't have tonight. But right, <laughs> this is the point in the episode where I am going to tell you what is going on. I want to say what up to everyone out there in computer world. As Aaron likes to say, uh, I'm your producer for 38 to 38, Phil Buck. And if you've been watching the past few episodes, you might be wondering, is Phil a guest again? 
Well, no, actually this week we decided after 21 episodes of interviewing guests, it was finally time to put Aaron into the hot seat. So joining me for a very special retrospective episode of 38 at 38 is Aaron Bolton. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Hey, hey, how are you doing out there, everyone? Thank you, <laughs> Phil. Thank you, Phil, for having me. Thank you, Phil, for having me on this uh, this episode. This is this is great. I do feel, you know what? When when we talked about this, I was like, yeah, that'd be a good, that'd be a cool feel, and that'd just be pretty cool, you know, uh, this dynamic. And um, even beforehand, right before now, I'm like, yeah, other hand, right? But, but I'm feeling like a little nervous, and I'm usually Ooh. nervous every episode because I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I don't know which. Um, uh, a quote that the 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 job is going to pertain to. I don't know that, so I have to come up with. So that there, that uh, nervousness is already there, always there. But this is a little different. This is, I don't know what's going to be coming at me. You know, questions <laughs> or what I'm. You know, well, I don't have any uh, quotes. Is- I mean, but I mean, to to give everyone reference that's watching, I mean, if you've been with us for a while, you know that we cover a lot of ground. And obviously, we have to 38 jobs in 38 years. Uh, You've kind of explained the jealous of that. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe you have world experience, Aaron, that people just, you know, not everyone has that. But um, you have made a point to help us understand how you have such a rich history, job history. And it's because you're doing jobs, you know, several jobs at a time sometimes, or they're just little blips in time, things that you did to, you know, scrape by from one thing to the next. And a lot of times when we're telling these stories, you'll remember, oh, I, have I asked you about that job? Or have I said, have I told you that job? Well, and then you always put a pin in it and you say, well, we'll, we'll, we'll we got to go back to that one. We, uh, you know, we're right, not going right. to do it tonight, but help me remember. And we never really get the chance because we have this list of all the big stories that the big jobs, but the little ones, they, they do literally slip between the cracks. So I felt like tonight is the time to let those shine. We will just ask you about some of your worst job stories. I will just be your, your (laughs) co-pilot and we'll go back and hit some of those. So (laughs) I would like to hear, I've got a little bit of a, a reference here to pull on. These are not quotes, but I am very interested in hearing about your time at the hard rock casino valet. Because, okay. I, you know, I love casinos. I've never been to the Hard Rock Casino, uh, but also working valet. Uh, do, did you know how to drive stick shift? I assume you had to know how to drive manual right. transmission. Right. So, yeah, no, definitely knew how to drive stick shift. And you're right. This is one of those gigs between it was like in between. Right. It was um, I had. Let's see. I believe I've already talked about. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, Bank of America. I, t- I was yes. talked. I talked about Bank of America, which is that's where I was 19 years old, and my the manager of the bank, the president of the bank, said to me, you know, hey, you should, you should be a pool boy for some rich, some older rich women, single rich. I was like, that, how dare? And I was like, ah, I should have, I should have <laughs> been, but that probably would have been a good idea. Um, but uh, so it was right after that, and then I believe uh, one of the last episodes I talked about Lenny Sub Shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was the last episode I talked yep. about Lenny Sub Shop. And I went from I went yeah with Alex absolutely, and I went from uh, uh, Bank of America to Lenny Sub Shop. But in between there, uh, oh no, actually I'm so sorry. It was after <laughs> Lenny's. None of this really matters. None of this. None of, I love that you're going to do it again details. on this episode. You're going to oh wait. Yeah, yeah. Put- <laughs> There's another one. I forget. Yeah, no, none of these details matter. It's actually it was it wasn't after uh, after uh, Bank of America. No one cares. No one. No one listening is like, oh no, let's get to specific. No, they're details. out there. There's some fans that have a pegboard. Right. They have all the That's details. Right. They're filling it's in like, the gaps right now. <laughs> it's, I'll do it's the like Charlie. A, me, you know, got, got like yarn on a board. I'll exactly. Connect. That's that's what I'm yeah. going for. Awesome. So, so it was after actually, Lenny's. It was after Lenny's, right before uh, working for Altel, and mm. um, and so it was in between that time that I was getting hired at Altel. Okay, so I was about to say because you, hired, I remember you told us that bit that you left the 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 Lenny's sub shop right. stick and saw your friends and they had you for a job, but you didn't tell us there was another job right. <laughs> in between well, that. <laughs> right, there was a job in between because it, it yeah. took a little, I re, I'm remembering, and this is one of those things I'm remembering right now. It took it took a few months for me, a couple months for me to get hired in at Alltel. I was hired, but it was waiting for the time to get, for it to get approved, all this other mess, going through training, scheduled yeah. training, all this stuff. Okay. So, uh, so it was a little bit of time. So I needed to make some money in between, yeah, yeah. you know, that downtime. 
So uh, over here in Tampa, they have a, a Hard Rock Casino, the Seminole Hard Rock Casino. And before it was the Hard Rock Casino, it was just a Seminole Casino and like bingo. And I think oh. there were just like slots and it was old. There were slots and it was... Um, Oh, probably like Baccarat or something, you know, Backgammon. I don't, I don't know. They were, they were playing Parcheesi. Who knows? Not a huge gambler, I take it then. <laughs> no, not. But also, it wasn't like a. It was like bingo was like their thing. And okay. uh, and since since it was Indian Reservation Seminole, they could sell their own uh, tobacco. They could sell their own. So they had, I remember that they still do have like a huge smoke shop where they like process their own tobacco and it's like all duty free and everything. Uh, so, uh, so it was just turning into the hard rock cafe. This isn't much time. I wasn't here for very so what long. Does that at mean? All. Somebody like, just was arriving with the giant guitar that goes on. Top. Yes. It was, and it there was, was one native now. American themed. And then somebody right. just, <laughs> basically, you know, basically it was like they, they sold, they sold out to, uh, or leased out to, uh, uh, hard rock, I guess the hard rock corporation. And now it's the seminal hard rock casino. And, but it was in that time where they were building the main building. There was like a little small building. They were building this huge building, but they already built this uh, and the hotel, but they had already built the parking garage. So they needed some valet. And this was a minimum of a quarter mile one way. Oh, like wow. if you're like from, from where you're taking the car, where you're, you know, the front of the, the casino all the way up to where you're in the parking garage. Cause it was, it was look the parking garage is like right next to the new building now. But this is like the old building, so you had to run past construction if you weren't, you know, didn't have a vehicle. Yeah, I was about but to ask now, you. That, that's the thing about a valet is not only do you have to know how to drive anything, but you have to just run all night. You just park right. cars, run back, park cars, run back. Right. And that's basically what it was. It was just parking, run back. And like I said, I wasn't there for very long. It was, look, what was appealing was like cash tips. And that's, you know, I was like, I think I was like 20, something like that. So I... uh so like I said, not many stories, but a couple, one smoke. I mean, people would go, I have, I have, uh, grabbed the keys from someone in like midday, one day, parked it, gone home, come back the next day. And then that person's coming out like full 24 hours later just to get, and this isn't like Vegas, this is Tampa. You know, this is, you know, there was like, there wasn't blackjack at that time. It was just bingo basically. Um, so, I mean, just full of smoke, everything's wild. I mean, it's the first time I got to drive an electric car, a, oh, wow. uh, a Prius. It was a Prius, and this is back in 2000, I don't know, three, 2002. So that was like, ooh, it was, I me, noticed it was fast. I forget that Prius was like the, you know, the, that that was the staple electric car. I, now you that think was the thing. I'm like, ooh, but no, now I'm like, oh, yeah, no. Prius. So. Yeah, how jacked up for Toyota. Toyota was like, we will do this. We're bringing this here. And then Tesla comes in and he's like, Elon Musk is like, Tesla is cooler. <laughs> And now all the pre, you know, it's funny. Prius people used to be made fun of before and they still get made fun of. Yeah. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the electric car. It has nothing to do with the electric car. It just has to do with the Prius people. Yeah, unfortunately, there is nothing, uh, you know, glamorous about a Prius. It's just. No, not at all. So, so the one, the one uh, story that just jumps out there is uh, there was, it was in the evening and there was a, um, a young lady who. Uh, young lady. I mean, I'm, I was 20. She was like maybe 23, 24. So already I'm like that's three or four years when you get older, it's not, but at 20, you're like, Oh yeah, she can buy an alcohol, you know? So, <laughs> so she came and, um, and gave the key to, uh, to pick up or I'm sorry. Yeah. I got the key to pick up the car, pick up her car. And at the same time I had to go park a car, a buddy I was working with or a buddy from there. He also had to go pick up someone's car. So I'm kind of flirting with the girl whose car I'm going to pick up with. They, the other buddy jumps in the car. I've got to go park. We drive, we park that first. Uh, we're looking for his car. We get into the, the young lady who, uh, who I'm admiring her car. And we find the other car that he needs to pick up. And right before he gets out, he rips one. Oh, he God. farts. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, just it's just the most immature thing someone in their twenties could do. Just rips it bad. That's a, and there's that's... a line of people. There's no time to go drive around the parking garage with the window rolled down. No time. You did because you got a line of people. It's it's a Friday or Saturday night. It was busy. You just got to go. So I just I did not even. I mean, I was flirting. She was flirting back, and at that point, here are your keys. 
Over, yep. and, over. and she was like, oh, hey, I, I didn't even try. Didn't try <laughs> at that. What's the point? Hey, nice to meet you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day, ma'am. That's it. Done. It's a whole, it gives a whole new meaning to uh, cock block. It's like cloud block or something. You know, you just. Oh, you yeah, just, yeah. Fart block. Sorry, fart yeah. block. There you go. Wow. Well. So that's a rough uh, I could see why you would be short lived at that job if your uh, right, co workers right. were just ripping them in the cars and leaving them to you. <laughs> but good story. But good story. A story worth mentioning, I think. I think it's more worth talking. It's got a couple, you know, got you to laugh. That's all I'm interested in. That's yeah, the only and thing I mean, I about my life is to get you to laugh. It's difficult to put that on your list too, because what is your quote supposed right. to be? Just, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> the quote is Aaron. Just I'm really interested in this one that just says P F F F F F F T. Yeah, like what T T. What happened? Oh, what? Oh, what a night! Oh, what a night! Yeah, not not a lot, but that's that's basically all that came from that job. But it was okay. a job. It was a job just to yeah. like. It's a good story. And it's, uh, you know, it's a hard rock casino story. Speaking of hard rock, uh, another job that's on this little list here is about uh, stone and tile restorers. Uh, don't yes. know if you did that on purpose with the geological no, <laughs> theme I didn't. here. But, <laughs> but I, I would love no, to I know. I actually have, surprisingly, a, a numerous uh, friends I can count that have been in the, those industries, both in sales really? and fabricating. And I recently went through a renovation a couple of years ago in my house and had to go through the whole process as a consumer. So I would love to hear your insights uh, on uh, your, right. uh, I'm assuming short lived time as is the actual right. theme at stone and tile restorers. Right. And this is, so this is also in my early twenties. Um, I don't know, somewhere between 23, 26, 25. And um, a buddy of mine worked for this company and their, their name were, uh, their name was stone and tile restorers. And that was it. I was like, good. That's, that reminds me of a, in Tampa on 40th street, there was a sandwich shop that was kind of popular and it was called 40th street sandwich shop. I love like, that. Super. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, not you notice words, buddy. All the strip malls, if you pay attention to enough of those strip malls, you'll always see the things that are like chiropractor. You know, like it, it, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no marketing, there's no name, there's no brand. It's just chiropractor. It's just this. Yeah. This is what it, who cares? Who cares Jesus. branding? Those people have to be so of or like void of ego. You know, because if I had a storefront, I'm like, you mean my name? <laughs> no one's going to be looking for an Aaron. They're going to be looking for a chiropractor, you know? Well, it's just, uh, yeah, it always flabbergasts me. I'm guessing those industries are like, you know, education and healthcare. You don't need to advertise. They're always in business, you know, like chiropractor. Yep. You're right. You're right. Um, so you're going to so, yeah, need your back cracked. You're going to, you're, you, that's a must. It's a definite. Have you ever been to a chiropractor? How'd you I like, have it. back I, and neck? The and older I get, the more I want, I desire that sweet release of just, just, just do it. Just m make it all pop. I don't know how that works, but <laughs> I believe that's also, I believe that's also lyrics from Nicki Minaj <laughs> or Cardi B. That would be my, see, if I was a chiropractor, the, the sign would say, make it all pop. <laughs> And you just, it would just be like a digital and it'd be like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Make it all pot. I like that. I like that. It's fun. Uh, if you got health insurance, do it. It's like 20 to 30 bucks if you have health insurance. Yeah. I've, all, I've always seen that. Never done it, but, uh, or never done it through insurance, but I've, I've been into car, some car accidents where I had to go to the chiropractor and they've done that. And, oh. It's so great. I don't care. I have a great friend, a great friend who's a chiropractor and oh, he wow. finds all of that abhorrent. He like the whole back cracking and stuff. Like he's like that. You should not do that. That oh. is not. He's yeah. He follows oh. some 1% of chiropractor. Yeah. They're Good like, to know. You do that. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's relief. But what causes that? What causes that pain? Let's figure that out. You know, I see. Nah, not yeah. when you can pop and lock. Pa, pa, pa. I have learned um, a lot about, about chiropractic tonight that I was not expecting. So I will, I'll go and I'll get it done and I'll report back. Hopefully I don't get, hopefully they don't make it pop is what it sounds like. I, I need to look out right. for. 
Well, hopefully, yeah, and definitely not lock. You don't, I guess, going to the chiropractor, you don't want to pop or lock. You don't want neither of those. I I was looking for the pops, but the pop and lock are right. two different things that, you know, you're not desiring from your bad, chiropractor. Bad news for, uh, bad news for the 1990s hip hop community. Yeah. Bad news. No pop. And maybe and that's why they chiropractic is just the name of the play. They're, that's they it. Tried the, no liability. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I didn't do it. <laughs> Must have been okay. some other chiropractor. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so so this was the, this was a, a gig. My buddy worked at this company, and basically, what they focused on a uh, stone and tile restorers is they would uh, get contracts with uh, larger con- lar- larger remodelings of uh, of hotels. So there, you know, it'd be like the Marriott or some some big hotel that they that all or a certain floor they're remodeling and all the stone has to be refinished and re- like, so, you know, oh. a lot of times when you're in the, the bathrooms, you know, the, the floor and the countertop are like stone, you know, n- not granite, usually like marble or travertine or something like that. So I, I don't mean to throw out all these fancy industry terms. Don't get into the shop talk now. I've never wor- <laughs> <laughs> So, so we, so we would go, so basically We'd go there. We'd work in the evening when everyone's sleeping, and like the, the um, uh, what's it called? Um, the floor is all blocked off and everything. And we would just re- uh, just just mind numbing, just think about something else, put something a podcast on, whatever. There wasn't podcast back then, but you know, just over and over and over again, just with the buffing tool or with the big tool. So we would go to places like we would go uh, travel around. To, uh, and I, like I said, I, this wasn't a full time, but this was a job where I'd call my buddy up if I was in between jobs or needed some cash. And hey, uh, do you, can you use me on this job or do you have a job where you can use me? Or he'd call me out many times and say, hey, man, are you available this weekend? I really need someone to fly over here mm. and help me, out, help me finish this out. So, so I did this for, yeah, I would say about five, six years every now and then, you know, uh, randomly he'd give me a phone call. We'd go out, we'd um, fly out somewhere and two stories. Uh, so <laughs> two times doing this, um, I got lost two times. I got lost. Uh, one time is when we, went, we were in Virginia, right? We went to Virginia and the, uh, I, <laughs> I was with, it was actually former, former, uh, guest, Rhett, Rhett Mullins, former guest on the show. Um, he was, uh, he was the, uh, the head guy, the main guy. And then his best friend, wow. Mike was there. I'm and, so glad and, you said Rhett, because the weirdest thing was happening when you were talking about flying out to somewhere. I'm like, that is just like what Rhett, Rhett was talking about on his well, episode. So yeah, he, yeah, just, yeah. he just stayed in, he's just been doing that. Ever. Yeah. He, he was doing that for years. So okay. he, um, so we went to, so we we're up in, they go, they flew out all the time. It was job for them and for me it was like yeah it was a job but now it's like seven o'clock and we're done for the evening and like man i'm not too far away from dc and i haven't been to dc and like hadn't been to dc in years you know and i was like oh let me take in the scene at like nighttime right and i hadn't eaten yet i was like no i'll get something over uh, over somewhere you know and i look uh i look at the i look on uh, online or look in the train uh you know schedule and man the train's right here i can get jump on the train real quick and the train will take me right in the heart right in the mall right in the middle of the mall in dc and i was like oh perfect so i'm thinking i'm hungry man i can probably just get something at the food court at the mall in dc the mall i don't know yeah. if you know where you're, yeah yeah okay. the mall yeah <laughs> the mall i'm like i can get I, and so on and i'm hungry haven't eaten like since maybe noon so seven hours i'm hungry and i took i'm all dressed up and i'm ready to go at least at the mall you know to the mall in dc so mm-hmm. i was like man how convenient that this train lets off right in the middle of this mall like that's got to be the foot traffic is that crazy for customer <laughs> retail <laughs> It's so convenient. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, man. So, and I'm no lie. I'm we're on. I'm on the train, and I'm hungry. And all I'm thinking is like, man, I just want some lo mein noodles from like Sukura, Japan. You know, like the where they chop. And I'm like, because every mall food court has one of those. Right. And I better hurry up because they're going to be closing. Yeah. Probably going to be closing pretty soon. This mall. And I get off of the 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 the. Uh, 
the train and there's an attendant there. And I say, hey, man, where's the mall? And he's like, right up the escalator. And there is cold air. I mean, it's it's winter, winterish time. Uh, I remember it was just really cold. And there's cold air just flaring through this, this escalator. And I'm like, man, they got the mall cold. <laughs> so dumb. And I get out there and it's just this huge field, this huge field. And I'm walking it. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> I love how nothing is occurring to you. The, the, the many steps that you're taking through this process. Dude, this is a Tuesday evening. Nobody is here. Nobody. The place is empty. The place is empty. And it's like just at nine. And I'm thinking I'm getting closer to the mall closing time. You know, no one's here. And I'm walking around. I'm like in this, this big empty space of grass. And I'm like, there's a Capitol building. There's Smithsonian. There's a, there's a memorial. Where is the freaking mall? And this guy's there. And I'm like, hey, man. He's just walking. I go, dude, where's the mall? And he looked. <laughs> he goes, hey, buddy, you're standing in the mall. And I was like, he was at, <laughs> mad about it. He just walked away. And it took me a second to realize, oh, okay, this is the mall. This is the mall. This, this is, uh, okay, this is where people stand in the mall when they're talking about in the mall it's just a big lawn he had a, a very de the, the the definition of mall was driven into your brain a long time ago from oh man just an 80s kid man yeah it's an 80s kid so I, I so i walked around and uh for a while and then my phone was dying so i had no service so i just i just happed upon like different memorials. Like, like I was like, all right, I hope I can find my way back to the hotel, which I was at everyone's mercy. I was like, <laughs> you ever feel like you're a, in foreign land, but everyone speaks your language. <laughs> I was like, I was like, like a Arlington? Lost child in the grocery store. You <laughs> Basically. Know, just, I was like, someone call my mom on the intercom. Please. <laughs> Where is Arlington, Virginia? <laughs> can you point? Oh yeah. God! Yeah, it was an absolute mess. Uh, and then the other time, I was working with uh, with Red, and we were up in New York. We were in Manhattan. And this, in this, uh, it might have it was Hilton Hyatt. It was always uh, like a larger chain, and they needed some help. You know, knocking out some. Uh, uh, they had really tight limits there, tight tight times. So I went in there, helped out. Now my we're in Manhattan, and my grandmother, my abuela, at that time she was living in Queens, and I had a really good friend, Jessica who lived in Brooklyn. So I'm like, okay, you know, I can do an all dayer, you know, I, you know, I, I, I slept on the plane. I got here, you know, I'm, I, I'll be able to get back in time. Cause it was, this was actually like, they, they started working at like eight o'clock and like worked until like, like 3 AM, one of those things. Mm. So I was like, okay, well I'll be able to go out and I'll come back and get some rest before blah, blah, blah. No problem. So I go out to see my abuela and I've got my phone and my GPS and nothing looks more touristy than this guy. And, you know, I'm, I'm over here like this and nothing is like updating. Nothing's up. I'm going like the complete opposite direction. You know, how sometimes you're walking or you're driving with your phone and the GPS, like you hit a turn. It's like, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, rerouting. That's how all of it was. All of it was. I was like, I've been walking three blocks and now it's saying rerouting it backwards. You know what? It was just not good. So I finally, I, I took a, <laughs> I took like a plane, train, and taxi cab. Like I took a train to a certain spot, got off, and I was like, this must be it. And then I walked for a few miles and then ended up hailing a, tab, a cab and was like, just take me here. And they were like, you were going to walk the rest of that way? Oh, my. It was like ridiculous. He was like, you would have to cross a bridge. Like I hadn't crossed the Astoria, like the bridge into Astoria yet. I forget which one that was, but or the bridge or wherever, whatever bridge that, that I needed to cross. So. I finally get to my abuelas and I'm talking to her a little bit and showing out with her. And then I've got to get going to go um, visit my friend, Jessica. My abuela already heard about my troubles getting there. So then she's this, uh, this lady in her, that was eight years. She was 80 years old, insisted to walk me down. <laughs> I'm in my twenties. She's like insisting to walk me down to the train. You know, she's like, no, no, no. Like she's going to pin the money on my shirt. <laughs> so she, <laughs> she walks me down and then uh, she finally puts me on the train. She's like, okay, go. And I told her, I'm going to go see my friend, Jessica. She tells me exactly where to get off. I go meet up with Jessica. Cool. We have a cool, um, fun time. We go to Cat's Deli, which was 
awesome. Like I've I've seen. Have you ever heard of Castelli? You know the the Rubens. Oh my goodness. Yes. It, they're fantastic. You know that you ask. They give you a sample. It's like a whole handful. Here you go. And uh, you just bring your own bread. Just bring your own bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tip. I'm gonna be in New York City in yeah. two weeks, so I'll just bring my my rye and just drop the corn. That's it. Yeah, Ooh, just sneak it real quick when they go to sample it. Ha ha ha! Gotcha. <laughs> um, so uh, so we're on our way. I, I uh, I'm going to leave, and this is like it's already maybe four or five o'clock. So I've got enough time to still get back. It's just Manhattan. I'm in Brooklyn. No problem. I'll get back less than an hour, take a nap. It was five, five o'clock. It took me over three hours to get. <laughs> what happened? Why? It was, I fell asleep on the train. I was oh, like, don't no. and, I, and I was like one of these, I was, cause I was so tired. I hadn't slept. I was like this. And then I was like, okay, next stop. It was like two stops. Okay. Okay. Next stop. Next stop. Okay. That was last stop. <laughs> like I had passed the stop. But what then, happens uh, when you fall asleep on the train? Does it just keep going around the city with you on it? Or yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just keeps going. At least oh. I and I got off on the next exit on the next stop. And then when I got off, I was talking to somebody there, and they're like, "Oh man, it's gonna be hard for you to get from here back to where you should have got off on the next one. It would be easier." <laughs> how do you do was, that, <laughs> dude? I was like, I don't even understand how this is happening, man. So I got back, and that had it was like a big. Oh man, I had to go. He was like, "You got you got to go all the way back around." And I got they were so ticked off at me because I'm here trying to supposed to come in and help, and now yeah. I'm like thirty minutes late. Thirty minutes late. I was like, guys. The day I've had, the day I've had, guys, they didn't care. So, yeah, that was that was fun. Also, see, two good stories that, you know, I think two good stories dealing with work. Yeah, I think you've alluded to the mall story before. I, I'll have to go see if I can find the episode because I, 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 I kind of saw that. One, I could feel it. But I, we didn't get the I don't I think we didn't get the full story like we did this time. But no, the the subway story, you I don't think you've ever even touched uh, on that one before. So, no. yes. So the story is probably, if I said it before, it's probably with Rhett because Rhett loves that story because he's also like an American history buff. And he's like, he's yeah, like, it was probably like, you didn't know what the mall <laughs> That makes yeah. sense now. That makes sense. I'm glad we got to yeah, circle yeah. back to that because now I can tag that episode. Everyone check on the, the little thing up at the top and you can watch Red's episode. <laughs> Look at us using technology twice now. And then it, there is another one on the, the notes here that it looks like I actually do get to read a quote today. Um, oh, nice. You know, this does sound familiar, though. It, it's referencing Bucca de Beppo. And it says in the quote, make me laugh. So now I get to put the little graphic down there for that. But uh, right. I, you definitely talked about Bucca, Bucca de Beppo, sorry, at some point. But I, that's yeah, right. all I can remember is the name. I don't know why. Yeah, I think I just mentioned it once and I pulled back because mm. it was a place that I had worked at. I had worked at, but it was one of those. Uh, and I'm not sure if I told this part of the story. Maybe I did, but it's definitely worth telling. Um, so at this time, I was working at sears and i was working at uh and i was doing uh stand-up comedy so i want i was working at sears during the day i was doing all right and then i had just graduated high school i was doing stand-up comedy in the evening and i wanted to pick up some extra work in the evening so i was like hey let's let's go uh, uh apply over here at buca de beppo buca de beppo and by the way i'm gonna do this and i'll say buca de beppo and i don't care who i'm who i'm offending because you cannot have a name like buca de beppo and if i just say regular buca de beppo i sound like an idiot but you gotta go buca de beppo, buca de beppo. i you I'm know sure. i i get it uh when i i know very little spanish but there was a time in my life when i was first learning a lot of spanish more than than i ever had and i <laughs> worked with the guy who you know i would start trying to use some spanish words and he, why do you have like an accent when you start speaking spanish and i was like i didn't even realize i was doing that but now that you say it that way i i guess i need to make the when i speak spanish make it sound more white is what you're telling me <laughs> listen it's okay to say certain things within accents if the thing that you're saying is it because of the accent well, you know, i think like if you learn the word from people with an accent you might just interpret the word to be spoken that way i just think that's what right. it's not like you're trying to caricature the way they talk you're just like yeah that's how you say it buckety bippo that's how that's how i learned to say it so i don't anyway. say little little nas x <laughs> little, <laughs> little nas x you can't yeah, little yeah. nas x 
<laughs> little little Nas X. By the way, I think we are living in a time where there are more rappers with the name Lil and the name Baby. Just look it up, guys. It's like yes. hundreds, hundreds of rappers have the word name the word Lil or Baby in their name. Absolutely. <laughs> There's Lil Baby. He's like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he, everyone else missed out on that one. Except yeah, for how him. did you get Lil? Ba- how were you the first one to nail down Lil Baby? I bet there's lots of Lil, Lil, Lil Babies. Baby. He was just the most popular one. That's how yeah, he's the one. He's the one that came out. <laughs> they, they, they got out of that little crib. I don't have the statistics on this, but I absolutely agree with you that we probably live in the time of the most Lil and Baby rappers on on the planet Earth. But he's it's only gonna grow. Yeah, I mean it's only every, gonna grow. the I later want, we go in history, infant. that will always be true. Mini infant, little baby, mini infant, tiny, tiny embryo. <laughs> stem cell, little stem cell. Uh yeah, yeah, anyway. Cell. Got them all. <laughs> what happened at what what does make me laugh? Tiny fetus. Tiny fetus. <laughs> you can't do all day long i want to see a rapper with the name tiny fetus that's what he is and he's owning it one day it might be mine who knows um so buka de beppo <laughs> so like i was saying buka de beppo uh buka de beppo so i i was i wanted to get some uh some extra cash here again working at sears doing stand-up comedy stand-up comedy this is the beginning and it wasn't paying at all so it was just uh it was paying with knowledge and expertise of course uh, and exposure right, right? Yeah, right, right. So, um, so I, uh, I, I went there. It's so funny. The guy who interviewed me and I had gone to Buca de Beppo, u, uh, to eat multiple times, by the way, um, have you, have you ever been to a Buca de Beppo? No. Uh, so it's like all family style eating. So like you order some spaghetti, I'm sorry, some spaghetti. <laughs> right. And how did Aaron get canceled? I was going to say, the most to, ridiculous to way ever because of you using an so accent. You're saying, so you're saying a Cuban guy got canceled for using an Italian accent? <laughs> what does this world come to? <laughs> oh, so, uh, so like if you order like some spaghetti, it'd be like it's family dining, you know. So it's like a thing yeah, of yeah. spaghetti, you know. And they had like you know crazy pictures all over the place. It looked like a like a. a classic what people would consider an italian diner you know had like the red and white checkered you know tablecloths and then really a rough place to go to like after church on a sunday uh like with friends and stuff from church because like in the men's bathroom were just boobs or just like everywhere like every picture was like another topless woman but like it was in black and white so classy you know guys it was like <laughs> Yeah, did not expect yeah. that. Did not expect. Yeah, that. neither I, the first. I did not expect that at all. So I, uh, so we, I, I, during the interview, this guy interviewed me, and I, rem- he was the assistant manager, and I remember him. I'd always already went a couple times, and I remembered him, and I remembered him, and he was, he gave me a bad. I, I forget. I just had a bad mm, ick with him. Not just. I just. I know that because when I sat down, and I went to interview with him. I was like, I just remember having this. Mm, okay like i don't i remember him this wasn't a, this I, I have a feeling of not good times for some reason and i believe i was right this guy was um he was really high and mighty that he was the assistant manager and getting to uh getting to interview me he was really excited that he got to interview me and it was very so what do you so what are you looking to do here i'm like <laughs> like this, this like the most ridiculous questions. Like, like that he wanted to be more professional than like you're hiring a server, you know, you're hiring a server, man. And you know, he's like, what are like your so goals? Basically, yes, yeah, ba- yes, yeah. What I'm are looking your to expand on my <laughs> my server. I see you've been. I see you've been working here for Sears for two years, not moving up there. Like one of those. Like I just turned nineteen. I'd like to be head server within the next month of being here. It's uh, my first goal. I want your job, but don't get me wrong. I (laughs) want to help you become the manager and I (laughs) want to be your assistant. That's my favorite answer you could give on an interview. I want your job. I'm here for you. I'll start here, but I will finish in your chair. But I will finish. (laughs) That's where I will be. As I sign your resignation paper. (laughs) 
<laughs> so in that scenario, not only am I getting promoted, they're getting demoted, and then I'm firing them. Yeah. So very good. I, that is very aspirational. I would say if they right. didn't hire you based on that answer, then what were they looking for? What are they What are they trying to find? Okay, Mr. Perfect. Oh, right here. Uh, so, uh, so he finds out that I'm, I do stand-up comedy. He finds out that I do stand-up comedy. And because I, my 19-year-old dummy self probably wrote it on the application under hobbies or skills or something, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> stand-up comedy. <laughs> and he said, oh, that's so funny. He goes, you know, our, our general manager here used to do stand-up comedy for years and years. I was like, oh, no, really? Oh, no, I didn't know that. He's like, yeah. He's like, so if you're so funny, why don't you tell me a joke and make me laugh? Mm. Mm. Uh, dude dude i was like i said i said okay well you know it doesn't really work like that you know it doesn't really work like that he's like well why not he said are you're funny right i mean this guy he was just and i'll uh, he just he just looked like a jerk you know how some i, I don't mean to jump but he was like like this was this was his resting look oh god <laughs> that was his resting look was and he and he works around the area. I've seen him many different places over the over the many years. And still that look, I believe he's I humble. The same Hopefully. expression. The same resting expression. chud face. That's what I'm gonna call that. Resting what? <laughs> the resting chud face. Resting <laughs> chud. <laughs> I can't even do it. But that's what insp- that's what you inspired in my mind when I looked at that. Oh god. <laughs> oh, uh, so so he said, you know, tell me a joke. And I said, well, it doesn't really work like that. You know, I'm like, I'm not on stage right now. You know, this is an interview. Ha ha ha. He's like, no, no, it's fine. Just tell me a joke. I said, ah, really? I don't think he said, I I was like, the jokes I have are more like storytelling, like stories about my, my upbringing and things. And, um, he goes, he goes, it's fine. Go for it. I go, "Ah, I really don't know if they're appropriate. I don't know if they're appropriate. He's like, just try me out, try me out, try me out. And I started in with my first joke. Um, I'm not going to say the joke. I'm just going to say that it, it was 19. It was from my first set that I ever had. And it was not appropriate. It was not appropriate. And it wasn't like, it wasn't appropriate. Uh, it wasn't like offending anyone other than myself. And it, but it was not, I got one sentence in and he, his eyes are like, and I said, you know what? I don't think this is right. He goes, I don't think this is no, no, you're right. I don't, I, I think. We're right. <laughs> oh no. I, I stopped halfway through the second sentence. I was like, you know, I don't think this is, I don't, I don't like, I don't think this is working. At that point, I was like, all right, well, nice to meet you. <laughs> you know? And uh, right after that, the general manager walked in and he was like, oh, hey, this is, you know, so and so. We exchanged, you know, hellos. And then he, uh, the man, the assistant manager left and he was, the manager was like, yeah, let's, let's find out. And I was like, I was just like this, waiting for him to leave. I was like, Bro, you used to do stand up comedy? And he said, Yeah, yeah. And he was like, I, I switched because if he used to stand up comedy, this is the only way that I'm getting this job. Only way. I knew that I, I, I was, bro, you, I, just like that, bro, you used to do stand up comedy? And he's like, Yeah. I go, Dude, your assistant manager, part of the interview process, he just asked me to make him laugh. I said, I, I, said, I do stand up comedy too. He just, and he went, the, the manager went just like this. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when, when can you start? When can you start? <laughs> Just like that. Wow. Like, when can you start? wow. Nice. Nice. So that was Bravo. fun. I will, yeah. I, mm-hmm, use that. Um, I don't think the guy, the guy never liked me. I was only there for, oh, man, maybe a month. The guy never liked me. And the reason I left, here's why this is a short. Well, because I started getting more gigs doing stand up. Didn't, didn't, right. I wasn't anticipating that. I was like, this is going to be, you know, a while. I'm just going to be kicking the bucket, trying to get something. And I started getting asked to travel. So I was like, oh, but mm. the real thing that, that cut it was, no, I, I, I wasn't even out of training. I think it was like, a, it was a long training, but I don't even think I was out of training because I was told this was my first night. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's right. <laughs> this is my, no, this is my first night, not in training. They said this was my first night, not in training. And because of that, I was going to, um, help out on this really big party that came in and it was like the, the local chamber of commerce. So they came in and it was like, so it was everyone, it was like open, like the drinks were pouring. I mean, so I was like, there was already a set tip. 
you know, and I'm just going to be tip sharing. And I worked my tail off and all the other servers there, they knew me by that time. I wasn't in the inn because I just got out, you know, just finished training and I was working. They're like, yeah, man, this is going to be big for you. This is going to be big for you. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, cool. And it ended up being like a really big night for tips. And I didn't get to tip share. They didn't, they didn't let me, what? they said, Oh no. Cause it was your first night. Because they said that uh, the other server said that I wasn't doing much, oh my which God. I was running like the people in the back. I always make I always make friends with the people who others don't make friends with. I do, and, and in a restaurant and in hospitality, that's the people that aren't up front. So I make friends with the dishwashers. I make friends with the cook preps. I make friends with the cook line. I make friend with, friends with them. They told me, they were like, yeah, man. They, they And they were like, dude, you worked your tail off. They were telling them the waiters told uh, the manager that you didn't really. Yeah, not nothing bad, but yeah, he wasn't really working Well, because they didn't want to share that tip out with me. Oh. Like, that's, messed, that's messed up. And so the manager was like, yeah, well, don't worry. Everyone's going to tip you out. Like that's something at least. And everyone tipped me out like three bucks. Something like 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 they walked away with a oh. couple hundred dollars, which a couple hundred dollars in the early 2000, like 2002 couple hundred dollars for one that's a great night mm -hmm. and like i walked away with like something like 30 bucks oh like, my god oh. so i was like yeah and you just pieced out on that much. yeah i pieced out on them and i was like i'd rather bomb in front of an audience than deal with this <laughs> <laughs> make me laugh make me i'd laugh. rather not get paid in front of laughing people that are laughing right with me not at with me, me. Or even at me, I'd rather be, you know, at least I'd, I'd rather have people laughing at me than me working my tail off, expecting to get something and not getting, you know, what was expected or what was promised. So I, <laughs> I'm glad you were able to, to hit that story at the end here, because for a couple of reasons, one, I have a lot of friends who are in stand up comedy. In fact, one of the people that I would like to have on the, the show in the future, probably it would be a couple months, uh, was a stand up comedian. I think y'all get along great. Uh, but I've always heard that phrase, you know, tell me a joke. Like if somebody finds out you do stand up comedy and you're just, you're just hanging out somewhere. Oh, well, tell me a joke. You know, it's like the, it's like, <laughs> I got the little thumbs up going. Sorry. <laughs> they, <laughs> it's like the, uh, you're, you're propping yourself up. That was a good idea. Hmm. <laughs> the gra uh, the, it's like the graphic designer phrase that, that you always hear, make it pop, make it pop. You yeah. know, it's just like yeah, the yeah, dreaded yeah. phrase that, so I, I love that you gave us kind of like the quintessential stand-up comedian story. And, oh, and I had to hit the buckle de Beppo on it just to kind of really tell me a joke. <laughs> but I mean, the other know, side I, of that, around, how many times have I seen that man around? I've seen him so around so many times just working at someplace else. And I've been like, Hey, you want to hear a joke? <laughs> <laughs> want me to tell you a joke, buddy? I think of it every time now. Every time. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of people that if, if they've ever done any stand up at all, that they'll definitely relate to that. But, uh, the other side of that was that, you know, you hit on an interview story and we kind of have been talking about this for a while that uh, with yeah. 38 to 38, there's so many opportunities to tell stories uh, from certain industries because we being part of the MSP Media Network, we're obviously very tech focused here, but you have a, a history in many different industries, for instance, hospitality, uh, right. entertainment construction. I mean, we touched on so many. We even actually when we did the episode with Kyle Spooner. Uh, I think it was either before or after the episode talked about an episode just about parenting. Cause that's a job that yeah. so many people do that Ooh. they don't, you don't probably put that on your list of 38. I mean, right. I don't, I should, but I should. it is very a much job. a job. So, I mean, I just wanted to put that out there, all these themed ideas for episodes, because I think, uh, you know, we're going to be coming up on the two. I keep getting the thumbs up. <laughs> I don't even know how that's happening. Do you have something set up? Like it's because I'm running a Mac and then the new iOS, uh, it has these built in gestures, uh, automatically, uh, automatically. Yeah. I should go turn them off, but I forgot. Why, but, would, uh, they, why would they? No, but they, that shouldn't be an automatic thing. Like I know, right. Using this. Let's see. What is it? I think I can do one like this with the two thumbs up. Yeah. Fireworks. There we go. <laughs> Which is perfect. I was just talking about our two year mark. So we've got the fireworks. And I think, uh, you know, once we hit that two year mark, it's time to maybe play around with some of these, uh, you know, themed episodes. So yeah. to all the listeners out there, to all the people in the MSP uh, media network discord and the community that watches the shows, you know, stay tuned. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you have done jobs in some of these different industries, 
Uh, we want to have more of a, a, a larger group for 38 to 38 to get a few different stories uh, and not just, you know, that that list of 38. It will be uh, we'll be on episode 38 before you know it. So, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, especially. Oh, especially since I mean, like today, today we went through, you know, three, three of those jobs, you know. Uh, so. So, yeah. It, so if you if you're out there and you have any of those uh any stories, for instance, some a, a ridiculous story about hospitality, a ridiculous story about just the industry that you're in. Please reach out, reach out, leave a comment here on the on the show. Reach out to this email address. Yeah, yeah. There it is. It's right there. And or I'll even we can the, even drop the Discord uh, Discord QR code down there as well. Why not just get it's that right there? There it is. Ta da! <laughs> it's somewhere here, right? Magic. We do magic. Awesome. No, this is good, man. Thank you. Thank you for letting me get these off my chest. All those little, little jobs there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me back on the show. I love being on the show as the producer. Uh, I am, uh, you know, always excited when I get my time on the screen with you. I think we have a great, uh, you know, flow and I'm, I'm hoping with some of these, uh, themed episodes, I can get in the mix a little bit more so that. Oh, that definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. Brother, I appreciate it. You know, I'm gonna let you go ahead and sign off, man. You've been a fantastic host. All right, everybody out there in computer world. It's been another episode of 38 to 38. And uh, we'll, we'll be back with more Flamingo facts and uh, relic ridiculous job stories here before you know it. Or ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Thank you. Yeah. Couldn't let that one get by me. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you got to lick it again. Oh, God. Okay. All right. See y'all. <laughs>